There we go. All right. Uh, welcome. So what I did, because I want to finish just the, uh, the tiniest bit of uh, lecture material from yesterday that we didn't quite get through, we didn't quite finish talking about permutations. Uh, and so what I wanted to do to make sure that I say the same thing or relatively the same thing in both labs, I quickly wrote out the notes uh, and I posted them here. So the September 24th, and I said in brackets for the lab. And so um, I just wanna talk through these notes, but they just they're there. So um, you don't need to rush in and write them out quite yet, uh, but maybe write them out at some point. Okay, so that's where I put those. And then uh, we're gonna move to the actual lab portion and we're gonna work through what's called the birthday problem which you have maybe heard of before because it's kind of this, uh, this kind of mind boggling phenomenon. So um, anyways, and it involves probabilities. Where's my pen here? All right, so last day, we started talking about permutations and I guess that was just yesterday. So uh, yesterday we started talking about permutations and uh, specifically, what's so what's unique about permutations is that they do not allow repetition. So we're going to be talking about a k tuple. So what we did was we started and we introduced in general what is a k tuple because that's not terminology that we use all the time, right? And so um, a k tuple in general. So if they're not distinct. Whereas later we're going to define a permutation as a K tuple whose components are distinct, right? Meaning there are no repeats. So then uh, in general, a K tuple, and this is from yesterday, is if we have a set with N elements, right? Then we're interested in K tuples. So it could be here we started with a four tuple, right? Or we could talk about just in general a k-tuple, which is just a set of k elements, right? And so, uh, so if we want to have a, a four-tuple, we can let k be four. Then what we have is we have one, two, three, four slots, each of which have n elements to choose from in terms of uh, how many things could happen there. Right, and so this brings us back to the multiplication rule, right? So here I've got my one tuple, my two tuple, my three tuple, my four tuple. So if I'm interested in how many uh, possible four tuples I have, right, then I have n to the power of four possible non-distinct uh, four tuples, okay? So here in general, it's doing the adjustment thing. Who knows when it decides to do that, uh, but hey. Um, so in general, there are gonna be N times N times N times N. If you have K, right, a K tuple, then you have N to the power of K non-distinct K tuples, okay? So now, if we're going to tweak it, right, permutations are, are the number of k-tuples that have distinct events. So if we're going to tweak it to talk about distinct events, then what we're going to force is that we're going to force k to be less than or equal to n. The reason we do that is because if we have a group of 10 elements, for example, and I want to choose 12 of those, right, which means that I would have to do it with replacement, right, so if I pull 12 elements, two people or two things are, will be chosen twice, right, and so just to force that 12, so that's why we're gonna, uh, and it just kind of follows naturally that we're only, we're gonna choose fewer elements than the total number of elements in the set, okay, so um, we're interested in k tuples, whose components are distinct, meaning no repeats uh, from the elements of A, right? And I've got a little subnote here or footnote sort of, I guess, uh, 
notice that we force k to be less than or equal to n to allow for distinct components, right? And so if we don't, if we have k larger than n, right, then we need to resample some of the people that we've already sampled because we've ran through the entire group. So for k distinct components, Right. If we think about component number one, number two, number three, number four, now what's going to happen is for the first component, we have all the elements to choose from, right? We have n elements to choose from. For the second component, we've already taken up one of the n, right? So that means that here we, we chose one thing to happen, and then we have n minus one choices for component number two. So now we've taken up two of those n components. So now for the third component, we have n minus two, right? Uh, components to or elements to choose from, um, and then so on and so forth. If you notice the pattern, right? Uh, if we let k be three, right? Then it's n minus k minus one, right? Three minus one, n minus, four minus one makes n minus three, right? And so you'd have to develop that kind of um, pattern, right? And so you get to n minus k minus one for the kth component, right? So allowing for a k tuple. So then by the multiplication rule, right? If we want to know the total number of possible outcomes, right, that satisfy this criteria, we just multiply through. And so that's the multiplication rule. And so what that means is that we have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way up to times n minus k minus 1 k tuples with distinct elements. Okay? And so that's where we get our permutations from. So we call such a k-tuple a permutation, okay? And we use the symbol, right? P superscript n uh, subscript k, so P n k, right? To denote the number of k permutations. So k is from the subscript taken from a set of n elements. Okay? So how we write it out, is we have PNK, right? And you might be familiar with the PNK function. A lot of calculators have uh, like an NPR function and that would do the same calculation, right? So we need to know how many am I choosing from in total and exactly how many am I selecting, right? So we can write it out with the multiplication rule and with a little bit of finagling, right? What we'll find is that we could rewrite this in terms of factorials, right? And so the factorial, n factorial is n times n minus one times n minus two times n minus three, blah, 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 all the way up to uh, n minus n, which would make zero. Zero factorial is one, you may or may not remember, but it's just, n, each of the n components multiplied together, right? Divided by n minus k factorial. And you can work that out, right? Usually you have to um, write out the factorial, right? So you've got n factorial divided by n minus k factorial, right? Let's think about why that is. Well, it's because if you wrote out n factorial, all the way uh, to, I don't know, zero. It's hard to do, you don't have an N, you don't have a starting point, but in your mind, you can kind of uh, write it out, write it out, right? And then if you think about N minus K factorial, right? That's basically, when I divide that out, that's basically gonna lob off the, uh, the half that comes after N minus K minus one, right? because the next component would be n minus k. And then the next component would be n minus k plus one, right? And so on and so forth. And then, um, but 
if you start at n minus k here, so if you wrote n minus k factorial, that would take care of the rest, right? So you've got kind of two components. You break up your, um, your numerator n factorial into two components, and then you divide one out, and that's how it works. Um, okay, so the example that I wanted to work through today was, was not this, but we have to have this in our back pocket to look at the birthday problem. So uh, the birthday problem is, is a fun example, I think. Um, it's a little bit kind of mind-boggling, too, um, but it's a fun example that involves permutations. So what I want to do is I want to, well, first, let me know if you have any questions about permutations. Otherwise, I'm going to switch screens here. All quiet. I'll see. Uh, but I am going to go switch. Got it. And stop sharing. Okay. And I think this one can actually leave. Uh, it can leave, I think. Just so it doesn't have to work so hard. Put away. Okay, get set up here. Uh, <laughs> share this screen. The entire desktop sounds good. Okay. So, oh, that's why I like to have the iPad. Now it's all coming back to me because then I can see what you're seeing. That's what I like to do usually in class, but um, okay. So I posted the birthday problem on Moodle. And so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna copy. So just like before with that other assignment that I posted, you're gonna copy this and you're gonna start a new R markdown and it doesn't have to have a name or anything because you're going to delete it all. So then uh, you can use shortcuts, of course, but it's easier for me to show like this. Okay, so you're going to bring it in like that because Moodle can't handle the RMD files. So, but it's not that big of a deal. So this is how I'll share them. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, so I'm going to pull up, this is the same thing. Uh, actually cancel. Just want to make sure one thing. Okay. So this is the code that you have, and this is the birthday problem document that I posted. So what we're going to do is we're going to knit this and see what happens. Okay, so it produces this document, very basic. Um, and here we go. So uh, the birthday problem, let's just talk about what the birthday problem is. Notice that it's easier to read in the HTML document, or if you prefer to read from the markdown, that's fine too. But I do have a little bit of LaTeX in here, right? So for example, 365 carat N wrapped up in dollar signs, produces what? It produces this, right? 365 to the power of n. Hey, it does a little uh, cute little highlight there. Nice. Okay. And so from this document, right, you can figure out how to do uh, a lot of this notation, right? How to write out uh, things like superscripts and subscripts, right? You just grab something here, this one has a superscript and a subscript, right? And so you can see in the R markdown file how you would produce that, okay? So I give it to you so that you can kind of work backwards and uh, get some ideas. Okay, good. So um, the birthday problem is that the, the probability 
of at least two people having the same birthday in a group, even from a relatively small group, the probability of two people having the same birthday is, is quite high. And so what we're going to do is we're going to develop a way to calculate those probabilities. Okay. And so I've given you the birthday function, and it is from the textbook. And what I noticed was that they had this uh, nm1, which is n minus 1, but it actually doesn't do anything in the code. So I commented it out um, for you guys. You can play around with it. The code in the textbook goes from n to uh, from one to n m one, but that gives you the wrong values. So I decided it was wrong. So that's that. Uh, okay, but before we talk about the code, which is given to you, it's not something that I'm expecting you to be able to develop. Um, it's quite involved, right? And so let's just talk about what's happening here. So we have n people in a room, okay? We're gonna assume that n is less than 365. That follows from the same idea, right? If, we, if we're talking about k tuples, right? Then we want k to be less than n because otherwise we have to have repetition. And the whole idea here is that we wanna avoid repetition. So the first condition is that we have a, a group of people that's less than 365. We're also assuming that people are unrelated in any way, right? Uh, people who are related might have birthdays close to each other, right? Just, I don't know, who knows? Um, but kind of typical, okay? So then we wanna find the probability of the event A, and I just realized I don't have the chat open, but it's all quiet there. Um, so we want to find the probability of the event A that at least two people have the same birthday. So we are simplifying it quite a bit by saying at least two people. Okay, That could be two people, three people, four people, five people, blah, 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 right? But at least two people, just any two people at least have the same birthday. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign numbers one through n to the people in the room. Okay. And then we're going to use n tuples because everyone in the room, so say there are 10 people, we have to look at everyone's birthday. So whatever the size of the sample is, right, that's going to be your, your n tuple. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have person one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to n, right? And then we're going to consider the birthday of each person in the room, right? January 1st, we're not counting years, right? We're just counting uh, days, birthdays. Uh, so January 1st, maybe January 2nd, January 3rd, January 4th, that would be one way that we could have distinct uh, birthdays, right? Or maybe January 1st, January 1st, January 2nd, January 3rd, just to kind of uh, give you an idea, okay? And so um, using the multiplication rule, right? If you have n slots to fill, meaning you have n people, okay? Then you have 365 days to choose from, right? We're just ignoring leap years, et cetera. 365 days to choose from for the first person, 365 days to choose from for the second person, 365, 365, and making 365 to the power of n possible birthday n tuples. Okay. So this is the total number of possible outcomes. So this is the number of elements in the sample space. We use that to figure out probabilities, right? And so another assumption that we're going to make, and it's uh, kind of related to the people being unrelated in any way is that we're going to assume that birthdays are equilikely to occur on any of the 365 days. Okay, so uh, it that may or may not be true, 
right? But we are assuming that all these birthdays, the, the probability of having a birthday on any one of those days is one in 365, right? Which means that uh, the probability, so each of these n tuples has a probability of 365 to the negative n, which means what? It means one over 365 to the power of n, right? Which is the number of possible n tuples. <clears throat> The complement of A, right, is we're going to bring in the complement of A because as soon as we're talking about at least two people, right, at least some value, usually we leverage the complement, right? We say um, at least two people is the same as one minus the probability of no people having the same birthday, right? And so the complement of A is the event that all the birthdays in the room are distinct, okay? And so the number of n tuples in the complement of A is going to be that permutation, right? The number of distinct uh, birthday combinations that we could have from a sample of 30, 365, right? It, from a group of 10, for example, if n is 10. So that's kind of tricky. Right, because we had to think, okay, for the birthday problem, the, the, uh, the group that we're interested in or the probability that we're interested in is the probability of at least two people having the same birthday, right? But as I kind of mentioned or touched on is that that's like having two people having the same birthday, three people having the same birthday, four people having the same birthday, all the way up to N people having the same birthday, we don't want to find all those probabilities, right? And so that's when we resort to looking at the complement instead. So the complement in this case is that no people, right, have the same birthday. What's the problem with one person having the same birthday as itself? That makes no sense, right? What should the probability, if n is one, the probability of uh, at least two people having the same birthday should be zero? Right. So in this case, right, so we're talking about uh, the complement, we're leveraging the complement and saying that, okay, there are P365. So from 365 elements, I'm choosing a set of N elements, right, or an N tuple. P365N is going to give me the number of uh, n tuples that have distinct birthdays. Now, there's not just one n tuple that has distinct birthdays, right? If we're talking about um, a four tuple, right, just to bring it back to size so we can think about it, is so if I tell you, okay, in my four tuple, I have birthdays January 1st, January 2nd, January 3rd, January 4th. That's a distinct four tuple. Right? How about February 1st, February 2nd, February 3rd, February 4th? That's a distinct n tuple. Right? And so there are many, 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 many different distinct n tuples. And we find the number by doing uh, three, P's 365n, right? The number of permutations from 365 of n. So what we have, right? If we think about the number of possible outcomes, right, for distinct permutations over all possible n-tuples. So ignoring distinct or non-distinct, right, all the possible n-tuples is 365 to the power of n. So then what we have here on uh, the right-hand side is the probability that there are no distinct birthdays. Sorry. The probability of all distinct birthdays is what I meant to say should have said, which means that, okay, if we have the probability of only distinct birthdays, then the probability of at least one, uh, or at least two people having the same birthday is one minus everyone having the distinct birthday. Okay. So here, let me move this up a bit. 
So just as an example, right? If n is two, so if we're looking at two people in the room, right? So now two people, you can think about all those possible birthday outcomes, right? But then the probability that those two people, because we only have two people, have the same birthday is one minus 365 times 364, because by definition, that's what P365N is, right? If N is two, then P365N is gonna be 365 times 365 minus one. So 365 times 364, right? Divided by 365 to the power of two, right? Which is 3652. So you're going to multiply and divide that out and then subtract it from one. So what we find is that the probability that two people, any two people, uh, have the same birthday is 0 0.0027. Okay. And so we can use this R function that we've been given right, uh, to figure out what the probability of at least two people from some sample size that we're giving it, uh, that we input into the function, um, that they have, that there are at least two people that have the same birthday. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about this function because you may or may not be totally familiar with, let me zoom in here, sorry about that. You do have it, but it's hard to have multiple screens going. So, um, no, can't see on the iPad if I'm zoomed in enough. Go one more for good measure. How about that? So, in this R code chunk, I'm creating this function called birthday. And it knows that it's going to be a function because it's assigned to a function that takes input n. Okay, so where it starts is it looks and it says, okay, I need a starting point for birthday. Birthday is going to start at one. Okay, and so that's just one person. Okay. And for J, so here, this, I commented this out because notice how it defines NM1, but then it never uses it. In the textbook, it uses NM1 here, but like I said, that actually gives the incorrect output. And so I'm gonna delete that. And you could, you could remove this line entirely if you wanted to, but commenting it out means that it's just not gonna run it. So how we do uh, a loop like this, Right, because what we want to do is we want to give it some input of n, so four people, for example. Then what we want to do is we want to find uh, the probability of, or the permutations from 365 of four of a four tuple divided by 365 to the power of four, right, and then subtract that from one. So what we do here, and and this is tricky and. I mean, I shouldn't say even I have, but uh, even I have a hard time kind of slicing and dicing this into something that makes sense. But um, if you spend enough time with it, it will start to make sense. So um, we use a for loop, right? And so that's just going to get us to loop through uh, a number of items. So for J, which is just a placeholder. So it's a variable in one to n, okay? What it's gonna do is it's gonna calculate, recalculate birthday where it's the previous birthday. So for uh, the first birthday, it's just birthday equals one. So then it would be one minus, and then it's gonna do it for, so starting two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, until you hit, uh, n, right? Because then you have 365 minus j minus 1, which is that j comes from up here, right? And so that's going to be this loop until it hits n, which you entered in the function, okay? Divided by 365. And then so that closes the loop. And then what we're going to do is the birthday 
is going to be one minus whatever it landed on in the birthday. Now, for me, especially when you start programming, right, using the same name all the time and updating it uh, gets really confusing, right? So you kind of have to follow along here. It started at one, and then we get it to loop through until we hit N. And then we take, okay, then the birthday is actually going to be one minus that birthday that it ended on, okay? Which is the probability of distinct birthdays in a group of N. And then we, we get it to return whatever it landed on here by one minus the birthday from here that it got to in the loop. Okay. So how are we gonna run this? How are we gonna use this function, right? If we have it just in the R code chunk here in our markdown document, then we could do something like, uh, we could do something like add an R code chunk Actually, I'm going to start an R code chunk down here, maybe. And you can use a little shortcut, insert an R code chunk. And I used to remember the shortcut, but I can't remember it right now. So now if I do birthday of four people, for example, all right? here's what gets people a lot of the time if you try to run birthday of four right so just i'm not going to use any shortcuts i'm well i am i'm going to highlight copy paste down in here so if i try to run birthday of four it's going to complain because it doesn't know what birthday is okay so here right could not find function birthday however if I knit it, if I knit it, then it gives me some, some answer. So the hard part is that this, the console here, that's its own kind of separate working body. Okay, so that's where you can run things to check to make sure that they're working right before you knit but as long as everything is in here so here the birthday function is defined in the markdown document so when it runs through it it says oh, okay i know what the birthday function is now so now i can use it right whereas here this the console doesn't know what the birthday function is yet so what you do is you're going to and there's lots of ways you could hit the play button which just runs the in entire code chunk, or you could highlight it all and you could uh, copy paste it down. I'm gonna hit this run current code chunk. Notice that it runs everything, all right? And now it says that, hey, I know this function now, right? And so now if I use the up arrow, I can flip through my previous uh, entries and now if I hit enter, now it knows what 0.016355 is, right? Or the birthday of four people. So what it means is in a group of just four people, the probability that at least two of those people have the same birthday is 1.6%. That's pretty high, I think, right? And so what if we did something like the birthday of 10? Now I'm at 11.7% roughly, right? And so on and so forth. So you can play around with all these different uh, birthday inputs, right? To figure out the probabilities. So um, it's tricky to figure out, okay, so I've got this, this brain, the console that is, is working and I can run things and I can check things, right? Um, and sometimes there will be cases where maybe you've entered something in the console and so uh, it'll be up here in the global environment, but maybe you forgot to include it in your markdown document, right? 
And so the alternative here would be if I comment all this out and you can, on a Mac, it's a com command shift I or command shift C, sorry, comments it all out. So now when I knit, right? Now it says, hey, I don't know how to do birthday four because I don't know what birthday is, right? And so then you would have to include it. So command shift C for kind of mass commenting and mass uncommenting. Okay, so um, what I want you to do is just use this birthday function. Right, so uh, for now, we're just gonna use it, abuse it. Um, and now that I've uncommented, I'm just gonna knit it to make sure it's still working. It will be, but it's always good to make sure. So now what I want you to do is, so for the lab exercises this week, I want you to use the R function birthday. So use this function to determine the value of N such that the probability of n is greater than or equal to 0.5 and the probability of n minus one is less than 0.5. So where do we cross that 0.5 threshold? So where p of n is the probability that at least two people in the room of n people have the same birthday, okay? And so what I want you to do is in a, an R code chunk kind of similar to here, I want you to show all the steps that you did. So maybe you did something like birthday of four, maybe birthday of uh, 40, just to see where it puts you. And I'll knit it just to show you, right? Birthday of four, that's too little. Birthday of 40, that's too high, right? So now you can kind of um, work your way in to kind of zone in on the N where it crosses over to 50%. Okay. Second thing I want you to do is kind of out of left field, but with enough Googling, you will figure out how to do it, okay? So I want you to make a plot and it can just be a basic, basic plot, okay? Make a plot with the output of birthday on the y-axis, right? So you've got your, your function output on the y-axis, okay? And so it's going to range from zero to one, right? Um, or maybe not one, because I'm only getting you to go to 50. But so you've got your birthday function closer to maybe 0.9 for, for, for 50. But so on the y-axis, you've got your birthday output. And then on the x-axis, I want the values one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to 50 doesn't have to show those individual values because that might be hard, but I do want a point for every uh, one of those entries. So there should be 50 points on your scatter plot. Right. Okay, so I'll give you a little bit of time to work on that because that's all I wanted to do today. But if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, otherwise, this will be due. Uh, next Friday. So you, you've got time, you've got time to, to play around with it. Um, good. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing here. How? And all right. So we didn't use the entire time. You can use these 10 minutes to have lunch or work on the lab. Either way, uh, I'll be here if you have questions. Otherwise, have a good weekend.